Hi guys, today I'm here to discuss Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by JK Rowling. I have been rereading this um, just about, just little by little, like a half of chapter before bed or a full chapter, and I've just been really taking my time and enjoying it. It is a rather large book, and I have been reading other books while rereading this. I mean, I mean, if you just saw my December wrap up, I read, for example, 10 or nine books in the month of December and then I finally finished rereading this. If you missed my discussion videos over the first three books, I'll put those links below if you would like to watch those. And um, yeah, please only stay if you have actually read the book uh, because I'm going to be discussing it in detail and I would absolutely hate to spoil you about Harry Potter. I don't know if I could live with that, that I ruined these books for someone. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just gonna be discussing some of my favorite parts and you know, some of the new characters and things, just like before. And uh, it's probably gonna be a long video because this is a pretty big book and I have a lot to say. So good thing I wrote some stuff down. So in this book we have the Triwizard Tournament and so that was very, very different obviously than like the first three books. Um, it was very strange because we didn't have as much Quidditch in this book and so we're so used to Harry talking about that and like his practices and things and like the upcoming matches. Um, we did have it in the beginning like with the Quidditch World Cup which that was pretty cool. You just don't hear that much about other wizards besides you know like Hogwarts and then like the families of the children and things so that was really cool to see so many wizards in one place. Um, if you guys uh, are on Pottermore they released the beginning chapter so it was kind of cool to see all the tents and stuff and I don't know I just thought it was cool. But also you saw new characters with the Triwizard Tournament itself because of the new students that came into Hogwarts. That was really interesting too because you're just so used to just these students and just you know and then it's just like muggles and so I thought that was really cool. This is also a super important book because this is like when Voldemort really returns and that's just such a huge you know turning point in this series because up until now it's always just been people talking about him. So many of you know already that the Weasleys are some of my favorite characters. Uh, Ron's dad absolutely just cracks me up. I love when Ron sends Harry the letter and it's about the Quidditch World Cup and he's like, if they say yes, send Pig back with your answer pronto and we'll come and get you at five o'clock on Sunday. If they say no, send Pig back pronto and we'll come and get you at five o'clock on Sunday. Anyway, I love how they're just like, doesn't matter what they say, we're still freaking taking you to Quidditch World Cup. It's the freaking Quidditch World Cup. And then it's hilarious when the Weasleys try to come in and the chimney's like blocked and they're like all freaking out. <laughs> this is great. Mr. Weasley will always be one of my favorite characters. Like just JK Rowling puts in these like little random lines here and there that just will make me burst out laughing. Um, for example, they're at the Quidditch World Cup and he is, they're like picking a good spot for their tent and stuff. <laughs> Mr. Weasley was more of a hindrance than a help because he got thoroughly overexcited when it came to using the mallet. They finally managed to erect a pair of shabby two-man tents. He got overly excited when it came to using the mallet. I love him so much. Or what about like when he's trying to light the fire? Dad's having fun with the matches, said Fred. Mr. Weasley was having no success at all in lighting the fire, but it wasn't for lack of trying. Splintered matches littered the ground around him, but he looked as though he was having the time of his life. Oops, he said as he managed to light a match and promptly dropped it in surprise. Yeah, I just imagine him over there just like surrounded by matches and he's just like, oh, I did it. And then he drops it. And then when they're at the castle and there, it shows that little boy with Hagrid, his small face protruded from over the collar looking almost painfully excited. When he had lined up with his terrified looking peers, he caught Colin Creevy's eye, who's already just nuts, gave a double thumbs up and mouth, I fell in the lake. <laughs> So great. He looked positively delighted about it. I love the enthusiasm. He's freaking out Hogwarts. Who cares? Who cares if he fell in the lake and he's like freezing and might get hypothermia. <laughs> the Triwizard Tournament deal, um, I already mentioned it was really cool to get to see so many other students and things. When Harry gets picked though, that was personally, I thought, one of the worst parts of the whole book and when Harry and Ron are fighting. So frustrating. It's so frustrating to read because you know, I mean, it's just so wrong. They shouldn't fight. They're best friends and you just love them both. And it's so horrible. The three of them just belong together. And you really get a feel for how lonely Harry is without Ron and Hermione. 
I mean, really, Harry's a little bit more like myself. Um, I just have a few close friends and then the rest are just more kind of acquaintances. And I've always just kind of been like that. And I've tried to make, you know, more friends and like become closer. I just, I don't know. I've always kind of been like that. So I can kind of relate a little bit, but I'm, I was so relieved whenever they made up. But that, I mean, obviously Voldemort coming back is pretty bad, but Harry and Ron fighting was just the worst. It was awful. I hated it. And it was so ridiculous too, because why would Harry want to put himself in the freaking Triwizard Tournament? He has had enough pain and suffering and just excitement in, in his life so far to last him for a lifetime. He doesn't need anything else to, you know, test his bravery. He's good. He's set. I guess Ron was just kind of feeling like, you know, Harry's always in the spotlight and I, it just, I, I understand. I understand Ron's deal but it was still annoying. So in this book is when Hermione has the S-P-E-W spew. Um, and that was always one thing that frustrated me about the movies is that they left that out. My friend Charlotte and I have talked about this before, but it's just such a bummer they left that out. And I understand, you know, not everything can make it. But that was just such a good example of, I guess, Hermione's character. And it just really showed how great of a person she is, I suppose. And she just, always helping others and she doesn't just think about herself and I don't know I just really like Hermione she's definitely one of my all-time favorite characters out of all the books I've read and I really look up to her and I, I, I guess that sounds kind of silly but I just really admire her and I don't know I think she's a great character but I it is kind of a bummer they left that out of the um the movie I think everyone's favorite part or mostly everyone's favorite part was when Mad-Eye Moody turned Malfoy into a ferret. That was one of the best scenes in the whole wide world. It was great. Oh, what about Hermione's teeth? It talked about like before how Hermione had pretty big teeth. And in this one, she gets hit by a spell, by Malfoy's spell. And by the way, freaking when Snape acts like, you know, a complete jerk and says that he sees no like difference, I just wanted to reach to the book and just smack him. He makes me so angry. And I've talked about this before. I cannot wrap my mind around the fact that he was bullied as a kid. Why does he just encourage bullying of other kids? It doesn't make sense. But I love that when Hermione goes to the nurse and the nurse starts shrinking her teeth. I love how she doesn't tell her to stop and so she like kind of corrects him. Um, that was pretty smart. I would have done the same thing probably. I'm pretty sure everyone hated Rita Skeeter and I know a lot of girls my age read a lot of magazines and keep up on gossip and stuff and I really don't do that. I really don't care. There's a few actors and actresses that I'm mildly curious about because I really really like them and I really like their movies like Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I wouldn't mind hearing some random like info if it's true every now and then. But I'm not really one to, I really, really try to stay away from gossip and stuff. And that's all Rita Skeeter lived for is gossip. And so I naturally could stand her. I loved the ending though with Hermione and the ladybug and the jar and everything. And that was so creative because the whole time you're reading like, what is going on? How does she know this stuff? And so that was one of those cool things that JK Rowling always throws in there. You're like, oh, at the end of the book. Jo was another character. I mean, she's been mentioned before, but she hasn't really been like a big character. And I think everyone always feels so awkward for Harry because, oh, uh, just, I think most of us have been there where you try to ask someone something like that and they've already, I mean, not, it's not that they wouldn't want to go with you, but someone already asked them. So, you, you know, someone already beat you to it and it's just awkward for everyone. Um, like for example, with prom um, in high school, I've had to do that where um, I wasn't dating anyone and I had a friend ask me and then like a day later someone else asked me and it was really awkward because you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but it's just an uncomfortable situation. I really felt bad for Harry. But anyways, I already mentioned one of my least favorite parts of the book with Harry and Ron fighting. And of course, Voldemort coming back. Um, one of my favorite parts was the Yule Ball. Love, love it, love it. In the book and the movie, I love when they have to ask girls out because it's just so different. It's just so fun because up until now, you know, they were just young kids and now they're finally starting to grow up a little bit. And it's just so fun because they're kind of at that stage where, I mean, they have Hermione, but Ron and Harry, I mean, don't just chat with girls all day. So 
it's I loved it how they see them walking in like packs and they're like how do you get one alone and Ron's like I don't know lasso one in the end I mean they do find two dates which they're not very nice to but the whole part with Ron and Hermione was just so like uh, I don't know I felt bad for Hermione because Ron definitely should have asked her but I mean they did I don't know they're just Hermione's just their friend so I can understand why they didn't immediately you know think of Hermione. But I love how ironic is it that she ends up going with Victor Crumb and that's like Ron's idol and then it's so funny how Harry finds like a little part of like the action figure later like what was it an arm or a leg or something he like finds it where Ron was like mad and like just destroyed it. Ron doesn't really get girls really pretty much this entire series until like the last one I feel like the little ball of light. <laughs> So the Triwizard Tournament really wasn't my favorite part. I mean, if you look at the book as a whole, it really didn't even take up that much time of the book. It was really just the like working up to the next like challenge and not even so much of like Harry and then being in the, the tournament, which I'm fine with because I mean, I don't know. It, imagine if Harry wouldn't have been chosen. Like that would, uh, what would this book even been about? Just, I guess they still would have been to the Yule Ball. So there would have been that. Um, Voldemort may not have come back, I don't know, or a different way maybe, but uh, I saw a post on Tumblr, it was so funny, I never thought of this before, kind of goes along with that, but it shows a picture of like spectators at the Triwizard Tournament, let me know if you've seen this, it's so funny. Well with the dragon it'd be pretty cool, you're up on the stand, you can see, but then in the water one, they're all just standing there, just staring at the water, and they're all just like chatting with each other because what are the... What, are, what can they see? It's not like the Hunger Games and the people in the Capitol have like the TVs to watch. They're just staring at water, just hoping like an hour later for people to come up. And that's what Harry, Ron, and Hermione would have done if Harry wouldn't have been chosen. Well, I guess Hermione wouldn't have, but anyways. And then with the maze, it was just a wall of like just the maze wall that everyone was staring at. Just like in suspense, like what are they going to come out? Who will win? Every now and then there might be like a red spark that goes up, but nothing happens. Like everyone was so excited for the Triwizard Tournament. I guess they were mostly just excited to like get the chance to compete. And because why would you be excited to watch that? There's nothing exciting about watching that. Oh, I love that they get to see Dobby again. And he's got like all of those clothes on. It is Dobby, sir. It is. <laughs> he's wearing a tea cozy for a hat on which he had pinned turn this huge book, a number of bright badges, a tie patterned with horseshoes over a bare chest, a pair of what looked like children's soccer shorts and old socks. One of these Harry saw was the black one Harry had removed from his own foot and tricked Mr. Malfoy into giving Dobby, thereby setting Dobby free. The other was covered in pink and orange stripes. <laughs> Oh, Dobby, we all love you so much. I love that Ron ends up giving him a sweater too. But I love that Dumbledore pays him because you know that like almost every other headmaster would have been like just laughed at him and just sent him on his way because, but that's just Dumbledore. Dumbledore is so amazing and we all love him so much. So did you all, I mean, I don't see how anyone could have guessed the whole Mad-Eye Moody, Barty Crouch. Like, I don't, I don't see how you could have, you could have guessed that. And even like rereading it, I've, I had me, how many times have I reread this book? And I had still, I'd forgotten. Like, I remembered that Barty Crouch Jr. was the one that sent up like the dark mark. And then, um, I remembered how, like with Winky and stuff, I had forgotten how he had escaped from prison. I totally forgot about like how his, like his mother's involvement and stuff. Totally forgot about that. So it's see rereading you still, you know, find things, new things, or you remember things or whatever. But that's all I pretty much have to say about this book. Love it, of course. Let me know some of your favorite scenes, your least favorite parts. Let me know some of your favorite characters. Um and yeah, I'm gonna start reading uh, the fifth one, Harry Potter and the Goblet, or nope, I just read that. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And of course I will do another discussion video. And uh, yeah, that's it. So um, yeah, I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.